Greetings, welcome back. My name is Greg Moss. In this video, we're gonna see how we can take an Odoo installation that we did in a previous video, it got up and running, how we can create a configuration file for that Odoo installation and configure it in such a way so that when the server restarts, that our Odoo installation will restart. Now, if you haven't installed Odoo yet, you're gonna to wanna to look at the previous video. Uh, we've broken this up into pieces. Also, in, in earlier videos, we see how you can get your AWS in, instance, your server instance for Ubuntu, and how to set up your SSH keys and so forth in VS Code. So please, if you like this video and you need more Odoo videos like this, please like and subscribe below. That really does help. And leave comments too as well that uh, what kinds of videos you might be looking for or if you had any tips for Odoo installations. So in this video, what we now have a working Odoo installation. It's running on port 8069. Now, this is going to be okay for development, but if, if you're moving in the staging, then there's probably a, a better chance that you might not want to go off IP address. You might want to use a, a, a subdomain or some kind of domain for your staging. But certainly once you get to production, it's probably unlikely that you're going to want IP addresses for everything. You're going to want these tied to domain names. And um, you're also going to want to make sure that the server can start and, and uses a configuration file as well. So there's, even though we got Odoo running here and we can verify that it is running and it's responsive and, it, and it's working like it should, now we're going to basically clean up our install, make it so that Odoo can uh, start the server if uh, the main server, the Ubuntu server, should perhaps get rebooted. So to begin, because we have our standard guide, remember you can get this free installing Odoo 14 on Ubuntu guide. Below I'll have a link where you can click and uh, get this guide for free so it'll help you walk through all the steps. So we've done the first part of the guide here where we've tested out our our installation. So now um, once we've gotten there we need to configure Odoo so that we could run custom add-on modules and things like that as well. So the first thing we're going to want to do after we stop our server is deactivate our virtual environment. So I'm going to come back to our install here and this time we do want to control C to kill our server running and we're going to do a deactivate and when we do deactivate notice that our Odoo VMV goes away here now we're no longer in the virtual environment we're back in Odoo uh, just running Odoo 14 uh, as the user so we're out of the virtual environment but we're still Odoo 14 as the user and when we come back here we'll see that we want to make a directory for our custom add-ons to hold them we don't want to put them in with the regular source code we want to uh, our own directory for that and that we're going to use the mkdir for make directory now we still want to be in odoo 14 as the user here because we want the permissions on this directory to be appropriate for when we run the service we want this user to have access not the ubuntu user so that's important because if you if you happen to have Ubuntu here and you make the directory then the Odoo 14 user won't have permissions and you'll have to go in and set the permissions manually. Um, and so there now we want to exit now to uh, basically get out of uh, this Odoo 14 user. So we hit exit and by typing exit we get out of the Odoo 14 user context and now we're back to Ubuntu where we can use root and do administrative changes. So we'll jump back once more. And here you can see that I'm just gonna create a, a, an empty file here in the ETC directory and it's gonna, gonna be called odoo14.com. So I'm gonna control C to copy that and paste like that. And this is gonna bring up a text editor in the terminal. Now, because I've got VS Code installed, I could do some things to use VS Code to do this. The reason I'm not really doing that now is there could be a lot of people following this installation guide that could be doing PyCharm or they could be using just a, a terminal access. And so I'm kind of installing this as you would so you could install it using any environment you wish. Uh, so we're gonna use the nano editor here because that's what you would have to use if you're using the terminal. It's not so bad, we're gonna see how that works. So 
I'm gonna come here, notice it says copy the following code in the text editor. So we're just gonna select all of this down here like this and copy it. And I'm gonna right click and hit paste. Now, notice the most important things here are the DB user. If you want this to work, this is gonna to need to be the DB user. This also needs to be set to what you want that administration password to be, what they call the master password when you're actually in the database manager. So you remember in the previous video, it assigned this password. Well, we don't have to use that password. We're gonna make this configuration file tell the Odoo server what we want that password to be. So I'm just gonna leave it this. Um, actually, I'll just probably just change it to admin. Um, for this test. Now obviously this, you want to have this be secure now. I almost made a mistake. I'm gonna have to use my arrows to go up here and change it to that. I just want it easy to remember for the purposes of this tutorial. You're gonna want this to be very secure if this is in a production environment, this password right here. That's important to match the user you made. So if you used a different user other than Odoo 14, you'd specify that here. Now notice in our add-ons path, we're going into the Odoo directory here where we installed the code. But now you'll notice we have a path as well to the Odoo custom add-ons directory. We have our port defined here, and we also have what is called a long, a, a long polling port as well. Now, um, what I have uh, learned is that when you want to like um, setting up in Nginx with the long polling and Odoo 14, you most likely want to use multiple users here, uh, multiple workers, and you want to make sure you define this port. If you don't do the, these things, then the chat has, uh, it kind of runs on its own worker thread is, is the way I would put that. And so, this would be like a, a configuration I would use. And you'll notice down here there's a DBF filter as well that you'll want to use and set for your configuration file for what your database is, especially if you're going to have more than one database in one instance of Odoo running on the server. So this way, when you specify the configuration, Odoo is going to know exactly which database you're talking about. It's not just going to default to one. So I think uh, I would go as far as to say, from a security standpoint in any production environment, always specify your database filter here. It'll keep you from having weird uh, problems where if uh, someone uploads a, another database that it becomes ambiguous which database you're using. So we can leave this as is, I would hope. We'll hit... Uh, control W to write out. So that's where I'm getting this from right here. Control W write out. And then I can hit Control X to exit. And so that's created that file with those changes that I've made. We can go back here to our installation guide and no, notice I'm saying make sure you change the administration password for anything like that. Now we want to create the file that's going to start the Odoo service for us. And so I'm going to come here and click. So notice this syntax is the same because this basically says become an administrator, use the text editor to create this file. And notice this one's in the etc system D directory. And I'm going to hit enter there. And then we come back to our content here. And I've got to copy this into the text editor. So we just come down to here, copy and paste it. and You'll notice that we have a description up here, Odoo 14. This is just uh, informative, so this doesn't have to match anything else that we've had so far, but you know we keep it the same because that's just easier. And the same with this system identifier. identifier. This is what it's going to be identified in the system as, and we're defining that here. These, however, user and group, must match the user and group that you created earlier on. These are also important to be the same. Notice that the ex exec start is looking into our odoo-venv bin python3. So it's specifically picking the Python version from our odoo uh, virtual environment that we created. Notice here that we have a path right to the odoo bin that we were doing manually. So we were manually running this before to just make sure everything worked. Now we're going to run it automatically. 
And notice here we have a dash C, which stands for configuration file, and we're specifying that configuration file we set up earlier in this video. So even if all this doesn't make sense, that's okay as long as it works. If you're an Odoo integrator who's doing this a lot, hopefully this will make sense. You know, go back and watch the video again if it doesn't make sense the first time. But that's as clearly as I can explain it, is this exec start command right here is literally what is starting Odoo. Um, now, let me go ahead and control, write that out, and control X to exit. So that file has been created now. Now that file's just been created. It's not doing anything yet. So we have to notify Ubuntu System Services to reload uh, the services and pick this up out of the system here. So I do this. This is going to tell it to reload this file. If I did everything right, um, I can now enable the service. So that's going to be right here. I'm going to control C. And so sudo system control, CTL, I assume stands uh, abbreviated for control. I'm enabling right now Odoo 14. So I hit enter and it created a, symb a link here. It says to the target, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, this is what's going to make it so that when Odoo reboots, everything's going to be fine. Um, and now I can check the status and we'll see if it's running. And this looks good to me. I can see uh, that it's active and it's running. I can see that these are the groups and the threads. It's using this configuration file here. And um, it is saying that there's a bootstrapping compatibility runtime warning here. So this might be an issue. It says greenlit size change expected. I wouldn't worry about it too much yet um, because we're all green and we can see that it's running. Now this is still running on port 8069. So we should be able to come back to here, go to quotations, click on things, and so forth. So just like that, um, we are set. Now, I want to make sure we are by jumping back here. And uh, I can control C this now, or control, yeah, control C to get out of that. And that's not changing anything. It's running as a service. And I can look at the status again. And uh, we just want to make sure everything is running like it's supposed to. And um, no. I am not joking that my internet is rather weak now. So I just wanted to make absolutely sure there's nothing funny going on with the installation. And uh, sure enough, it's working as expected. The thing we would want to do now, just to make sure, is this is all running as a service, but let's do a sudo reboot and everything's going to go away and now we know in the background here Odoo or the the Ubuntu server itself the Ubuntu server itself is restarting going through a boot sequence and everything and we're doing this to make sure that if we have to reboot this server that we don't have Odoo not start up now we know Odoo will start up so um, I'm gonna hit Linux here it might not be back up yet you know because it you know, it takes a little while. It's usually pretty quick because it's running, you know, um, Ubuntu on an AWS server that's that still doesn't have a lot of services to start up. But, you know, 45 seconds or so is what you might expect. So we'll wait for it. So after a little bit, the server comes back up. And we don't want to do anything when the server comes back up. We just let this part sit here. I can see it's still activating extensions and there's some things. I just want to maybe make sure, you know, that we're here. When I listed it, we can see the package we downloaded for the uh, PDF plugin. Now we just come here and make sure that Odoo is actually running. And it is. So this is important, you know, just to test everything out. And that will, in this video, we... In this video, accomplish taking the OD installation, creating a configuration file for it. We also created a, a system service with the commands that are needed so that Odoo will automatically start. Odoo is now running as a service. We never have to go to Odoo bin manually to start it. So that is another complete 
piece of this installation. So the next piece that we would cover is how to now create a domain name with a secure SSL using Nginx so we have a complete Odoo installation that's secure. So Remember to like and to subscribe down below and click to follow. Make sure that you do that. That really helps me and it'll make sure that you get notified when I release new videos.